class, how are you guys doing? Welcome to Milestone 1. Okay, graphic symbolism. What, what do we have going on? Let's go ahead and go through Milestone 1, kind of set up the, the uh, expectations and the uh, uh, deliverables, due dates, etc. And, and we'll also take a look at a brief overview of the class. So basically, graphic symbolism, right? Why? Why do we study graphic symbolism, guys? Why do we study symbols? Why do we establish this shorthand visual language? And the reason is, is actually, it's, it's pretty intuitive when you think about it. So, you know, we, we, we establish this shorthand, basically symbols, graphic symbolism, icons, symbols, um, and ultimately logos are basically a visual shorthand, a language that is easily identifiable, easily recognizable, and easily able to transcend any sort of cultural or language barriers to create meaning, associated meaning, with the organization or the entity that we are designing for, okay? So for example, well, let's take a look at history, okay? So we look at the history of, of symbolic communication. We go way back to prehistoric times when there was no written languages and there was barely any uh, verbal language whatsoever. So how do we communicate to one another? How do we let someone know danger lies ahead, for example, okay? So we look at prehistoric hunters, all right? And we look at a hunting ground. All right, so we, as through experience, these prehistoric hunters denote these dangers associated with these hunting grounds. So let's say, for example, there's a fertile hunting ground, but there's a cliff with falling rocks. All right, how do you let, how do you let future visitors to that hunting ground, presuming they're friendly uh, and they're part of your, your, your culture, how do we let them know that this could be potential danger? Okay, there's no written language, there's no verbal language. Basically, they drew pictures, and basically those pictures were found on cave walls. So we would have to denote this falling rock, right? So how do we do it? Via pictures. So we could draw this whole series of rocks falling, but no, we would want to try to really condense this into one visual that would allow people to know what's happening and the inherent dangers of that associated Example. Okay, and again, this is an example, right? Just giving you a brief history on graphic symbolism. Let's jump over to, and so how does that transcend? How does that translate itself to modern graphic design? Well, we know one thing. We know that graphic symbolism is used heavily in logo design. And you guessed it, guys, this all is pointing towards the successful representation of a group or an organization through a logo, whether it's a word mark. Um, a symbol, a monogram, or a full-blown logo, or all of the above associated into one corporate identity package. All right, so it's really important to understand this transition between graphic symbolism and ultimately logo design, right? So, so think of the, the think of the right now. I want you to think of the most famous or the most the the, the most famous logos you can think of. Okay, and I think that. It'll be hard to argue that probably the most famous logo in the world is quite possibly the Nike logo, right? So when we look at that Nike logo and we say, okay, what exactly does it mean, right? It's a symbol. It's got meaning associated with it, right? But it doesn't mean anything until we learn it. So once we learn that meaning, once we become familiar with that symbol, we all, all we have to do is look at it and we are, it opens up a whole world of Nike, okay? So you're driving down the highway, you don't even have to see any text or anything, you look at a billboard, it just has the Nike swoosh, right? All of a sudden, that successful symbolic language opens up a whole world of meaning just by looking at that symbol, okay? That's what we're getting at, guys. That's what we're getting at. Let me describe this further. But I'm going to go through this milestone, this module, a little bit. And let's take a look at what we have. So my, my, my milestone one overview, take a look at that. Learning activities, that's a summary of what lies ahead. Guys, listen, these learning activities, this class is written beautifully. Beautifully. Okay, I can guarantee you're going to learn so much in this class. It's going to blow you away. But... You have to stick with with all of the the, the um, learning activities here. If you if you miss any of these, there's going to be a hole. 
there's going to be a, a, a rung listing at, missing on your ladder of education, okay? You can't miss these steps. You have to go through all of these. It's time-consuming, but very, very rewarding. This class is going to teach you so much about graphic design. It's going to spin your head. I promise you that. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump over to symbolism and graphic design. I'm just going to open that guy up quickly, and I'm going to go through some of these and, and really draw the importance. Then we'll go through the tasks, and I'll introduce those and give you some caveats here. This is symbolism and graphic design, okay? So we got a little history right here, and this click to explore. This is how to communicate with different um, visual stimuli, okay? So exactly, when you draw a line, what does it mean? What does it mean to your viewer? Okay, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So you may think it means one thing, but as a designer, you have to learn what it means based on what your viewer perceives it to mean. Okay, the meaning of shapes, patterns, colors. Go through these guys. They're really important, and you'll be able to apply these directly to your assignments. Historical overview of symbolism. I just gave you a very brief synopsis of the historical overview of symbolism. It's fascinating stuff. Go ahead and read through. This is a nice little interactive presentation here. Click to explore. And then here's some more history. And, and you can really see what I was getting into here. Now, here's another set of click to explore. And, and you, you guys, I mean, there's a lot of information here, but it's so important that you go through all of it. Okay, signs and symbols, again, another very, very important consideration. The differences between signs and symbols. It's very important to know because you have to know how to communicate using sign and symbol. You have to know the difference and how this can associate ultimately to, you guessed it, logo design. Here's a nice quiz here. This is great. Interactive, uh, deciphering the difference between sign and simple, we have denotation and connotation. Know what those mean, guys. It's very important. It's a very important way of communicating. It's really important for you to understand the associated vocabulary with this because eventually in your design careers, you're going to have a creative director and a, or a, an art director or even a client um, saying things like, uh, okay, I want you to uh, create a connotation between this uh, particular logo and this particular meaning. Okay, so it's really important to know exactly what they mean when they say that. That's why studying vocabulary is so very important. Graphic design is a symbolic language. Let's open that guy up. And this is kind of where the rubber hits the road, guys. It's only three, four paragraphs, but read it. It's really important. This is, it describes the, the bridge we're trying to establish between symbolic language or symbolism and how we use that associated visual uh, symbolic language in graphic design. Power of line, shapes, color, patterns, and colors. We looked at that a little bit earlier, but again, here's another wonderful presentation um, regarding the power of line, shape, pattern, colors, etc. Okay, Adobe Illustrator. Guys, it, it, we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator in this class, and whether you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator and you just need some brushing up or whether you need to really, really get down and dirty and learn the basics of Illustrator to use it for the assignments, Illustrator CC Essential Training is your go-to set of videos. That's lynda.com, guys. If you're, not, if you're not accessing that when you click it, I need to know immediately so that we can, um, so we can address that. Okay, here we are. This is redirecting me. We can see what's happening here. Now, if you notice, this is Illustrator CC 2015 Essential Training. Um, the main and most important thing here is that you understand that it's 2015. However, what we're covering, the basic tools have not changed. Okay, and, and for the scope of this class, this is a fantastic video for you to uh, get started and, and really to understand um, uh, Illustrator as it relates to our creation of sign and symbol. Here's our summary. Textbook, guys, important reading. Important reading. Got to read the textbook. It's a great textbook, by the way. I mean, I, I talked about that in the introductory video. But, all right, milestone one task overviews, milestone one task one instruction. When I pop that open, I want to show you what we're doing milestone task one. We have this overview and description. It's a cover letter, guys. You're going to write a cover letter to this, this kind of hypothetical company that we're working for. And here's some steps for success. Here's a cover letter template. 
right? Follow these verbatim, guys. If it's in here, submission specification, steps for success, it's fair game for grading. So you will be held accountable for everything in the submission specifications as well as the steps for success. I highly recommend you go through these. When you're done, go through them again. When you're done with that, go through them a third time prior to your, for your submission for the task just to ensure that you are submitting the correct elements in the correct in the correct uh, procedure all right and then also over here i've got this in in the task one instructions let's go ahead and open that and we can see that my computer is frozen okay here we go milestone one task one post here Okay, so I populated this with the first response for this task one post here. So here's a cover letter. What is a cover letter? There's a link. Great resources. How to write a cover letter. There's a link. Then our cover letter template plus a synopsis of what exactly is expected for milestone one, task one. Let's take a look at milestone one, task two. And we can see where we're going with task two is a creative brief. So we have a creative brief overview and description. Let's read this, okay? Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, open this PDF and you're going to choose a firm, all right? Here's what the PDF looks like. There's three different firms. There's a Guardian Network Security, there's the Mintar Publishing, and then there's the Wellness Center, um, the Mason, George Mason Wellness Center. So there's information here, guys. Remember I talked about the symbolic language. So you start your symbolic, your de development of your symbolic language based on the company, what their industry they're in, who their target market is, where they're located, how big they are. It's all points to research. These are your three choices for the companies for your creative brief. Once you select that creative, that company, you're going to rewrite the creative brief. Again, submission specifications, steps for success, all accountable and fair game when it comes to grading. And then of course we have milestone one task to post here. If I open that, you'll see another supplemental summary of instructions. And it's right here. What's a creative brief? That's a link. How do I write a creative brief? That's a link. Okay, and then here is your um, synopsis, kind of a, a overview summary of, of the uh, uh, deliverables associated with task two. Then of course, your submission instructions. So in a nutshell, what you do is submit task one, I give you feedback. You create your changes based on feedback, prepare that for a milestone final submission. Then you have your task two, you'll submit that, I'll give you feedback, you'll make those changes, prepare that assignment for your final submission. The final submission should reflect the changes uh, based on my recommendations and the recommendations of your peers, okay? Do not submit the same assignment for milestone one, task one, uh, or the task needs to be adjusted based on comments, unless your comments are something like, hey, this is fantastic, you're ready to submit, okay? So otherwise, any comments will need to be addressed. I'm on 13 minutes, I wanna cut it short, didn't wanna go that long, but I do wanna be as thorough as possible in this milestone one introduction. Okay, folks, there you have it in a nutshell. Uh, again, going back to my introduction video, I'm a very hands-on instructor. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to, to. I've got open door policy all the way. It's not my style to make you feel like you're not getting them. Even the, the, what you think is a, a silly question is not. It's very important. If you have a question, I have an answer. And if I don't, I'll find it. Um, you can email me or call me during office hours. If you work earlier in the day, it might be more beneficial to email as I will receive that. Quite typically, I respond quite rapidly. You won't be waiting for me for, for response from emails, guys. All right, uh, push in 14 minutes, wanna cut it short. Thank you very much. Questions, comments, concerns. Remember, I have an open door policy. Don't hesitate to contact me and I will see you guys in discussion board.